This is a Sylvania 19 TC12 a portable color television if you want to call 150 pounds portable and I could never really get the color right on this so I'm gonna we're gonna try and work it out now that I got a jig it's been sitting for years so I'm going to attempt to reform the capacitors and what I do this has is series string it has two filament strings uh, one for basically the horizontal output damper, horizontal oscillator, tuner. So I have that tube pulled out, and that tube is completely baked. Look at that. 42K in sex. It's a, it's a dual tube. It's got two elements in it, two parallel tubes inside that envelope. And then I got one of the audio tubes out, the 6AQ5. That breaks the two filament strings, so right now I'm just powering the um, just powering the the low voltage and re kind of reforming the capacitors. It wasn't bad. The light was on. That's a 40 watt bulb. It was on for uh, 10, 15 seconds. So, like I said, this hasn't been sitting a whole long time. But I would really like to fix this thing. Um, we'll take a look at what it does. I might end up changing the CRT in it. Uh, it should should produce a really good picture. That that actually looks like that sort of looks like an RCA coil right there. But no, Sylvania did their own thing. So uh, it uses a 19 FMP22, and it is weak. I'm going to run it for a few days and then we'll test the CRT because it has been sitting. If you're curious about the neon lamp here, neon lamps sort of act as regulators. Uh, I think they sort of regulate around 90 volts so that's why that's lit. It's lit and it's woke. It's lit because it's woke. So again, we're just kind of letting the, the caps reform. There is a little bit of a dim glow here. Very dim. Race advance, the skin on my outside fits how I feel on the inside. What Crepe Race Advance has given me as a 50-year-old woman working in the entertainment field is freedom. And I love that burst of confidence from thinking, I'm putting my Crepe Race this morning. I know I'm going to look good all day. I have a 10 and a half year old son, and I was playing basketball with him a few months ago, and I realized I'm wearing a sleeveless top. I'm not worried. I feel more confident. I feel more relaxed. Are you ready to transform the look of your crepey skin? I mean, look at these unretouched results. It's astounding. And it's all crepe race advanced. Crepe-tastic. Really are that good. And that's why crepe race became the number one selling anti-aging system for the treatment of the system on the body. Don't just take my word for it. Try it for yourself. Okay, so we're not getting any color here. Of course, yes, the CRT is weak. But, ooh, crepe matic But what we need to do is we need to get the color working first. And, and it is sort of working because you can see... Barely. See, as I turn it up there, you can see the shade change. God, this weak CRT makes that woman look ugly. Crepe Race has been America's number one selling anti-aging body treatment system for dry, crepey skin because it works. And now, Crepe Race Advanced with True Firm is our most powerful crepey skin fighting formula ever. It's clinically shown to improve the appearance of skin texture. So we need to fix the color issue. We need to fix the color. Ooh, her decollete. All right, I'm I'm becoming mesmerized and and drawn into the 
this deep. I changed the 6GH8 oscillator tube and it didn't make any difference. Ooh. See the see the barber pulling rainbow there when I turn the tent. So the color is working. It's just not. It's just creped out. I'm going to pull the chassis out of this and put it on the jig. That way we can have it on a bench and work on it. This CRT is a little tired. I'm actually looking for a replacement. I kind of like this set. I like the way it looks. It's not it's not as sexy as a Zenith, but I do like it. And it's a Sylvania. I tried changing the tubes, the the um, color demod tubes, and you know all the tubes in the color circuit with no improvement. So right now it doesn't even have color sync. You can see it kind of flickering there. So yeah, we'll pull the chassis out. We probably have a bad resistor, a bad diode, maybe an open coil. Nineteen sixty six Sylvania D zero three chassis color demodulation repair. So I got the chassis out and it wasn't too bad. It wasn't very hard to remove, but it, it you look at it, it is a real kind of budget minded set. Um this is the IF here, video IF sound, audio output tube. So all your video and sound is here, then your video is taken off. I believe that's the color takeoff coil, one of these two, and it comes over here. This is a color demodulation right here. This is your uh, 6GH8, 3.58 oscillator. Uh, this is the drives the colors and the BYRY thing that drives the colors into the CRT. It's too early in the morning to talk. Uh, horizontal output damper here. Speaking of that, I took a horizontal output tube apart. And you could really, this is the cathode here, and you can really see the cathode burn off that happens. I don't know if this one was red plated or just aged or what. And then here's the tungsten wire filament coated with some type of ceramic stuff. So that's what the kind of the heart of a tube looks like. Uh, be because of the asbestos heat shielding in this set, I decided to blow the thing off with compressed air. And even as careful as I was, I still caught the tube layout chart and the other warning, and it got terminated, which kind of pissed me off. But that's why you don't see me blow a lot of this stuff off. I always seem to do more damage than good. But with the asbestos, whatever. So, IF, color demod, video, high voltage. We got the jig out with the appropriate I got the appropriate connectors here for this chassis the appropriate adapters to hook the jig up the tuner right here it's very very easy to get this set apart do a little bit more of that I got the Sam's October 66 so we got our material. I got an unboxing. Some TV parts of viewers sent me. Thank you very much. We'll do this at some random point during the video. I don't know. Whenever I get wound up to the point where I feel like throwing this thing in the trash and rolling it out to the street, then we'll do the unboxing to take a break. So yeah, this should be this should be a good one. 
the first thing I'm going to do is I'm before I hook anything I'm up before I hook anything up I'm going to go through and check the electrolytics. It looks like we only got four here, one there. That's really all I see. Very budget conscious set. Oh, there were a bunch of tin whiskers on these pots as there usually are. These have not, usually I take these apart and spray paint the, clean and spray paint the, the shell, the metal shell. I've not done that on these sets, on this set. It's a very common problem on Sylvania and Portacolor. But I did take the air compressor and blow the living crap out of the, as much as I could underneath here where the whiskers form. So maybe the whole problem was just some tin whiskers in the color killer pot. I would hate that to be the case, but we're going to find out. That's what this beauty is for right here. Oh, this is a hot chassis set. I need to get the isolation transformer. Yes. I could make death of my test equipment if I don't do that. Taking a look at the bottom, our degaussing thermistor, degaussing VDR, color oscillator reference crystal, part of the sticker that I blew off with the air compressor. That's got to be the boost rectifier diode. Here's our input line filtering. Audio output transformer, filters. Boy, this is a budget. Oh, yeah, and you just, if you look at these traces too closely, they peel off the board. Oh, here's another electrolytic right here. See, I'm going to go through and check all of these with the cap wizard before I power it up because the cap wizard uh, does not like charged capacitors, it makes cap wizard go pop. Even though this has been sitting overnight, at least 24 hours, you still want to make sure that these are discharged. You don't want to take a chance here. Don't, don't assume just because they're 60 years old that they're bad. That, that, that's internet stuff right there. Some of these things have PCB oil in them and it'll just last longer than humanity will. Number one, acceptable. Number two, Acceptable. Number three, good. Number four, acceptable. Number five, good. Number six, acceptable. Number seven, good. Number eight, I think I'm on number eight, good. Is this number nine or number ten? <clears throat> this is a three microfarad at 200 volts. So I think I need a cigarette. Uh, so that's, <coughs> that's acceptable. Okay, this is that black one. Everybody hates the black ones. It's okay. That doesn't tell us if they're shorted, of course. It just tells us the ESR is low, but are, are tolerable. So we will be able to check DC voltages on different parts as we move through the diagnostic process and uh, find out if one of them is shorted or leaky and pulling a DC voltage down. So at least we know none of them are open. So that's just a generic easy place to start. I'm going to get the isolation transformer out, get it all hooked up, get it hooked up to the jig. We'll get the signal um, signal generator out, not signal generator, video signal generator out. And get it hooked up and see what the image looks like on the jig versus actually... I know this set needs a new CRT. 
apparently I found one and it should be on the way in shipping. If hopefully if I receive it in one piece, we'll do a CRT swap and have a really killer set. This has about the easiest to remove tuner. It's literally two connections here. It's your IF plug, your RCA plug, and it's this plug. But here's a design issue with this set. This is just poor design. One of these is convergence, one is tuner, and one is yoke. And I'm pretty sure that one's yoke. But this will plug in to all three of them. All these plugs are interchangeable. This is, this is really poor design. I don't know which one this goes in. It is a good thing we have service data. Everything's connected here. Let's start by turning the screens all the way down. At least I think those are the screens. Isolation transformer I'm on. Isolated. 275 VA. Geez, that's just about the, what this thing uses. Uh, 129 volts. Let's turn it on. Okay, 124 volts. Let's adjust this. Get it down to around 100, 117. 115. I can live with that, I guess. Our neon bulb is activated. I'm going to wait for this to come up. This tube is very tired, so it's a slow warmer. Kind of on the low side, isn't it? So now we're at 113 volts here. Let me come up one notch. 118, I can deal with that. It's still only at, is that 17 kV? Boy, that's tired. Um, service. I have nothing. Oh, that's weird. Wonder if we have a mismatch here on the impedance of the. This is set right. Why the lack of deflection? Green. Blue. Boy, look at that. Wow. So I think one of these was brightness. Yeah, there it comes back up. I think there's an impedance issue here. I do. Does that stop us from... I'm pretty sure this is the right adapter. Let's take a look at the plate current here. before we can before we start to assume anything is wrong I know that tube is is spent so uh, let's see what we're allowed here if there's a huge impedance issue it'll have high current uh, looks like we're allowed 265 milliamps and we're not even at 200 so it could very well just be that tube is turned. Yes, this tube does have two tubes inside. See that? It's a double filament, double Doigie Beimler tube. Here's a uh, 
different horizontal output tube. And I think we're, well, yeah, we got the same results here. Is this horizontal centering maybe? Okay, what is that I'm turning? Huh. That's like a brand new one and I got the same same issue. I got let's see if I give it some brightness. Oh yeah. Then it just starts to bloom. Yeah, something's not right. Something ain't right. Well, I can turn the high voltage up and it sort of gets it. I mean, you want some regulation here. You don't just want it wide open. It was down here before. So I can only get about 22 there. What do they want on the SAMs on this thing? Assuming the meter on the front of the jig is correct. What do they want? They don't tell you. Well, there we go. 21 to 24. Well, wide open, I can only get 21. Well, I, maybe I'm just going to have to accept this here. Uh, the horizontal centering, this is horizontal centering, and it's not doing, it's not moving it. It's just kind of adjusting the size of it. So I, I'm not going to worry about that. Maybe this configuration of this adapter is not right. You know, I doubt this thing works perfect in all cases. So, uh, let's get a signal put to it. So, of course, the color is working over here on this. Uh, the color is kind of smeared, though. It's not on the bars. It's kind of just washed across. It's not real clear, defined color. And some of that could be this lead length here. I've been told that the jig will tend to smear because of the the lead length between the the set and the jig itself. But that seems a little excessive. I'm going straight into the IF right now, and the color is just a big smeary mess. Look at this. Just, just trash. See that? The color does not stay on the bars. I mean, the, the video is not that good on this period, but the color really... I'd really like to go in with composite video. Can I do that? I'm currently in the process of switching tubes. I have another one of these sets. It's buried, but I can just get to it. And I'm really tempted to pull the chassis out and see the performance difference. You can see the same thing here. We don't have color bars. We have smudge. All right, I dug the other chassis out of the other set and it's the same thing in fact this one still has the tube chart sticker on it which I was thinking about photocopying that but it's a bit moldy so I don't think that's gonna happen so right now I'm just sweat uh, swapping tubes this is kind of going after the low-hanging fruit and uh, no it's it's not it does not appear to be a tube issue. It's something else. I mean, we should have defined color bars here, not this smearing. I'm going to hook the other chassis up. If I remember right, it worked, but it had capacitor issues, like leaky. Okay, here we go. Input into the IF, tuner connection, uh, convergence defeat yoke, High voltage, ground, CRT. Everything's hooked up. 
Let's let the smoke out of this sucker. Interesting. The on the other one, the neon lamp immediately comes on. That's interesting. On this one, it appears that there's a problem. I didn't turn this off, did I? No. Everything's still connected. What happened? Oh, there we go. Now we have power, but still no high voltage. Okay, why is this tube not glowing? That tube is not glowing, but this one is. I got a bad damper here. Did it go to air? Doesn't look like it went to air. Why is it dark? I think I know why, because this cheap ass set gets its ground through here. Yep. Yep, there we go. So the, the damper is on a different series string. There's two series strings of tubes, and the damper is on the same as the tuner tubes. So it gets its ground through the coax. Brilliant, Sylvania. Anything to save a penny on a wire. Okay, came right up. Okay, so the first thing I see is we still have the gap over here, so that's kind of reassuring. You know, my defense in doing this is that I don't work with a jig every day, so I'm not you know, I'm not a hundred percent familiar with. With the jig. This one does seem to work a hell of a lot better. See if just the focus. Damn, look at the vertical on this one. So we can dial that in a little closer. There we go. All right, so see the difference here? There's black in between the bars. And if I turn the color down, that's black and white. And the color is, the color is on top of the video bar, right? On this other chassis, the, the color is smeared across the whole thing. See how defined that is? This is contrast. I'm just kind of looking at this and I'm noticing one difference. This has mica capacitors in it and these are expensive, these dipped. This other one has those silver polypropylene I think they are and those are starting to fail. Back to this one. See the type of capacitors this has? See those little silver things? I worry that those are bad. Anyway, you can see the difference. See how there's no real defined, it's just a big smudge. The color just smears. The color is not fixed onto that bar. I think the reason why the color wasn't working in the set was probably whiskers in the color killer pot that I blew out with the compressed air. But this color smearing thing, I remember with this set, and I thought it was the CRT, that's why I ordered another CRT. It took me forever to find one, but I did find one. And uh, it's on order. So what I'm going to do now is measure all the DC voltages on a couple of these tubes. Um, I, there are two diodes, two bias regulators. I checked those. Those are good. I compared them to the other chassis. This has either got to be a resistor that's gone off or more likely one of those capacitors is 
screwed up. Everyone ready to get dizzy? I'm starting with the RY demodulator here. It's supposed to be 110 and then 8 100 and 8 is way off. So uh, where was it? So this is supposed to be this is the plate. This is supposed to be 110 and it's measuring uh, 144. This is supposed to be 100. It's measuring 157. Uh, air pain. 7 is supposed to be negative 10. It's measuring negative 7. And then the cathode is supposed to be 1 volt. But then if I go up to this one, the voltages are much closer. So if I go to that one, which is, let me see here. So this is the plate. It's supposed to be 140. It's 147. G2, which is supposed to be 130, is 142. Uh, G1 which is supposed to be negative 10, there's negative 8.9. So the voltages, the DC voltages on this one are way off. I'm going to try changing that tube, although I think I did that. That G2 resistor, where that voltage is too high, is supposed to be 82K and it's gone up to 95. So that's not the problem, that's gone the direction which would make the voltage lower not higher here's another one that's way off with or without signal I changed the tube to it's supposed to be 155 it's measuring uh, 258 and that's with signal or without and I'm gonna check that uh, resistor right there that 2200 you can actually see it right here so on this side we've got 258 this side we've got 257 one volt drop across that resistor huh well surprisingly that thing is measuring 2.1 K it's supposed to be 2.2 why would that voltage be so far off unless Sam's is just full of it? That's what I worry about, you know. I just don't trust don't trust these numbers on Sam's all the time. This is the good working chassis. And the voltages are all off here, just the same as they are on the other one. That's what I'm saying. You can't you really can't trust the Sam's. I mean, it just Sometimes they're a lot closer on this transistor solid state stuff, but this tube stuff, it can be off 200, 300, 500 percent, and it's the SAMs, not the, not the set. I don't know where they get these voltages. Did they actually measure them, or did they just kind of estimate them based on the circuit? Or did they get them off the factory schematic? Eh, we don't know. Anyway, uh, it doesn't appear that it's a DC problem, a resistor problem. I'm getting closer. I don't think it's alignment either because I, I kind of tweak those cores. And even if the cores are way out of alignment, you generally don't get really crappy smearing like that other one. This is the good chassis, and it looks like trash. I and mean, look at that. Should be nice clean fingers coming out to each position. Just garbage. And that's the good chassis. Yeah, there's a 3.58 oscillator and I'm looking at flag 105 right there. And I have a 1 to 100 low capacitance probe so that's on 50 millivolts per division. So we can figure that out. 50 
100, 150, uh, 175 times 100. So this is coming into the bandpass amp. It's on 5 millivolts. So that's uh, NTSC color bars. That is our stepped color bars. That is no color bars. This is regular color bars coming out of, and I guess I could turn that up a little bit on the set. That's color bars, regular color bars coming out of the BYD mod into the CRT. That is staircase. That is your EIA right there. So that looks clean. This is your RY. It's the NTSC. That's the color bars. I think it looks kind of crappy, doesn't it? But you know, let's look at this real close and then compare it to the other chassis. Let's see, where's my brightness here? If I turn that down, it might show up on camera a little better. So also on the bandwidth test, I, I'm noticing on this set, I, I can see the lines clear. Uh, I, I can see the lines well here. I can see the lines okay right here. And I'm going directly into the IF. So pretty good here, uh, bare pretty good here barely here uh, this might be an IF problem because I'm getting one two three four five uh, I was getting six and seven on the other set and then over here it's just totally gone Just totally gone. Huh. I might be chasing the wrong wrong thing. I might this might be an IF issue. I can't go into the video on this because it's a negative and it's uh, it requires a much bigger signal than what I can drive. On the troubled chassis the the 3.58s is a bit lower. I think it was 175 on the other one. No, well, yeah, one, let's see, 50, 100, 150. Yeah, it's about 125 on this one. It was 175 on the other one. Now that's times 100. Yeah, if I shift. Freaking insulation just failed on the wire right there. Maybe it's time to do that box opening I was talking about. Well, I thought I would fold up one of these gloves and put it underneath there, and it just blew a hole right through about six layers of it. So these are not real immune to high voltage. All right, this comes courtesy of Mark in Illinois, and I believe these are triplers. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, I guess you saw the video where I substituted a high voltage uh, flyback secondary and uh, rectifier with a tripler and came across these and thought oh you could use these 
which is very cool because they will get used sometime in the future. I want to do more of that uh, type of experimentation. I think they're kind of all the same. You can look up the schematics for them in the NTE book. Ooh, look at this one. Ooh. That one looks kind of erotic or exotic. That's very cool looking. I wonder what kind of wonder what set that went to. Probably GE. Oh, here's another one of those kinky looking ones. So very cool. Very thank you. We will play with these sometime in the future. Maybe I'll hook one up to this, this and we'll see what kind of high voltage we get out of it after I find a way to temporarily correct this irritant. Will good old electrical tape hold it? That's just black electrical tape. And yeah, I'm a little starting to wonder about maybe the IF or the detector diode. I really need to get into this after this with a video signal and see if it still smears. Hey, electrical tape works. Maybe masking tape would be better. All right, I, it appears this was an IF alignment problem, and I'm doing it the wrong way. I'm aligning it by I. But just to give you an idea, watch this. I'm going to turn this, the center IF. Come on. See how that changes that? Now, the way I, I aligned the traps, because you got to align the traps first, as I came down here and I put this on uh, sound trap adjustment 4725 sound trap adjustment and then what you can do is you can at least I think I'm on the right one you can null this out see that you can null it I'm going to try and align this per the instructions with the 415 and I'm not very good at this so I'll, I'll just see what I can show when I show it. Like I said I'm not very good at this and this is maybe this thing has a bad detector diode or something in it. Am I going to have to set up the other one and take a look and see what it looks like without touching it? I mean, they show something that looks like that, and you know, I've I've got a big chunk of that missing here. The blambulance. Okay, I'm gonna just. Uh, it doesn't change it that much. I'm just gonna. I'm on modulated markers. I'm just gonna adjust my sound trap there. That's all, uh, which I shouldn't, but I'm going to. This is the other one, so you can minimize this down to just about nothing. Okay, Crackle Pony Master Play. 
Yeah, I shouldn't start tweaking on this one because it works good, but just want to minimize my sound trap there. Okay, let's look at this one. It looks totally the opposite of the other one. So you look at how much is over here on this one. Uh, that other one was the opposite. You had all of this, all of this was cut low, I believe. And that is, that marker right there at the peak is 45. So it's like 45 to... 45 to 47 is all cut low. And yeah, I can adjust this to, to look better, but I'm trying not to screw with it. Trust me, I, I want to diddle with it. But that's going into the second IF. Let me go into the first. So that's going into the first IF, and they want you feeding right into the grid. And you can see the difference between the two. So that's just coupled to the top of the tube there through air. You can see what this looks like. The, the markers I have turned on are here, 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 and here. I'm just doing this for comparison. So see what that looks like. You have your uh, 41, 25, and 45, 46. 4125, 4725, and then the other two at the top. So this is sort of what you would expect. I mean, you're not getting that nice M-shaped thing. I never get that. But what you are getting here is you're getting, you're getting your full band pass, pretty much. I mean, you could, I could tweak it, and I'm trying to not tweak it. Back to the defective chassis. I'm getting tired of this. I'm going to wear the sockets out. So you can see the difference. This peak right here was on the other chassis was centered between these two markers. So frame rate crap. So this marker here and this marker here, that peak was between the two. So let me see if I can tweak this and, and get this. Well, almost like that. I mean, hell, that's about what it looked like. I, I kind of got this where it looks okay. I don't have the same gain as I had on the other one, that's for sure. The other one I had a huge spike here. And I mean if I limit this down, you know, I don't know. Let's do the chroma. I'm about ready to give up on it. I'll let my friend Al take a look at this video and see what he thinks. He's the alignment king. I'm not real good at this. I think I've definitely got it wide enough. Let's read how to do the chroma because I've been screwing with these coils and yeah this thing I mean even though it it looks okay it, 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 that's gonna produce garbage color picture there's there's still something wrong with the there's something wrong in this section right here and I really have a feeling it's one of those little silver looking capacitors it's just a gut feeling well the alignment definitely the the if alignment definitely seems like it mellowed out the smearing here and it'll probably produce a decent picture but i would really like to see this look like what it's supposed to i mean you'd almost think i have that hooked up wrong but i don't after 
sitting here watching it for an hour or so and it really seems to have kind of a just a low quality picture the colors aren't really smearing and that could just be the lead length of the wires between the jig and the chassis but i i unplugged it and i touched this flyback it's just warm it's just maybe it's 95 degrees it's just warm to the touch it's not hot by any means this flyback has ventilation too look at look at the it's got holes in the bottom so he it cold cold air can get in and holes in the top so it'll create a like a draft and pull cool air over the transformer I don't know we need to look at it in the set Yeah, I don't know. This wasn't really a happy fix. You know, I, I really would have. Fabulous. Polar fleece. Why is her face shadowed on the left? There is some smearing, but like I said, it's hard to tell if it's the chassis or it's the long wires. Not really any good greens. That's really what's important about your products is that they come in a beautiful box. Oh yes, everybody is going to be so excited about your Chinese charging center. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh, I can charge 10 adult toys at one time. Oh, it's smarter than us. Well, a block of wood is smarter than you, honey. Anyway, not a real good video. I would have liked to have seen some solution other than just aligning the IF.
Bell and Howell. All right, we'll get it back in the cabinet and have a look. This is that beautiful asbestos sheet I was talking about right here. This is a coil over plug ignition coil and I just cut part of the insulator off to hopefully stop the arcing right here. Actually, I think that looks a little better. I guess you really can't tell how bad the color demodulation is on a video. Great flesh tones. Great flesh tones. There's a, like a spoken word thing that runs in the background of this song. It's very hard to hear it. it starts right here. Just these epic flesh tones. This is not a CRT issue. I'm gonna put the other chassis in here. color demodulation is so jacked up on this thing. Is this Tiffany? Look at the smearing. I could just do music videos all day long. That's turning the tint. This is the best part right here. Oh, they didn't play mediate, but they're going to do a little borderline. Feels like I'm going to lose my mind. Where did all the groups like this go? Why is there nothing like this anymore? Because it's inherently unstable. Turning the tent. You can't tent. tell people they're in charge of their own government. It's a democracy, we promise. And then ignore over decades their most strongly held opinions on things that matter. That doesn't work long term. Color. They will rebel, guaranteed. And the best you can hope for is that they will do it peacefully. In Italy, they seem to be doing just that. This summer, a conservative populist called Giorgia Maloney. Every, every day that we're not going forward, we're going backwards. We are also looking for protection from long, brutal duty days of tw over 20 hours, being stuck in airports, sleeping on the floor. So this is the other chassis. In response Same to thing. It's a bad CRT. I just gotta wait for the new CRT to get here. This this issue is, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a chassis, but something wrong with the red gun in this, it's just causing it to smear and distort. Kimberly, thank you for that. Renters and tenant advocates are pushing to keep people in their homes as L.A. County prepares to end a COVID-related emergency eviction protections. Members of the Keep L.A. House Coalition rallied outside the L.A. County Board of Supervisors meeting today. They're calling for leaders to enact a permanent solution to keep vulnerable renters housed as COVID-related protections expire at the end of the year. 
Those emergency protections have been life-saving measures for tens of thousands of tenants across the county, and we can't create a gap in protection. Yeah, you know, like, fuck the landlords. Just let the tenants stay there forever free. Seeing an increase of uh, homelessness, harassment, mass evictions, and poverty. Well, some landlords say they've been left footing the bill and they want eviction protections to end. Statewide tenant protections, by the way, expired in July. A community group is calling on L.A. County Supervisors... So what, what, happens, what happens when the renters... Never mind, I'm not going to start. Not going to start. Not going not gonna to go back 200 years to what it was then. Um... Needs a new CRT, period. Like I said, this is the other chassis, and it's the same garbage. I did the whole setup. It's just a dead C The red gun is dead. Although I don't quite see the smearing. Well, maybe I do. But is that... treatment facilities we need unlocked uh, community-based resources and there's not enough of them in Los Angeles. Yeah, shut down all the prisons, make it so people don't have to pay rent, uh, just total utopia. Uh, just, yeah, utopia. No wonder why there's a mass exodus from 